In this video, I'd like to discuss persuasive speaking, what it is, and some effective ways to go about persuading people. So, first of all, speaking to persuade really means to influence the attitudes, beliefs, and values or actions of others. So, we're taking a step beyond just speaking to share information, which is what informative speaking would be, and moving toward getting push, pushing people toward a particular direction on an issue, or getting them to change the way that they view something, or believe in something, or or behave in some way. So that's what we're talking about when we mean speaking to persuade. Some persuasive strategies uh, include, uh, first of all, selecting an important topic. People are not going to be interested in a persuasive speech if it's <clears throat> an insignificant topic. It's got to be an important topic, a topic that, that really grabs the interest of the audience or that you can relate to the audience in some way make them interested. You also need to then, again, prove the relevance of this topic. People aren't going to be interested in persuasive speech if they don't think it has relevance. Again, it needs to be important and it needs to be something that people can relate to and that they would have an interest in. Then we need to use Aristotle's persuasive appeals, being ethos, pathos, and logos. So let's take a look at each of those things when we talk about Aristotle's persuasive appeals. First of all, starting with ethos. Ethos is persuasion based on credibility. So where do we get credibility, or how do we gain credibility with the audience? Um, through We talk about competence and character. Really, credibility comes from those two areas, competence and, credi credi sorry, competence and character. So uh, first of all, the audience wants to know that you're knowledgeable. They want to know that you're an expert in this. And if you're not, that you're borrowing expertise from others by using proper sources and, and things like that. They also want to know that you're honest, that you're sharing accurate information with them, and you're being straightforward and not trying to manipulate them in some way. That you're trustworthy, that you're, you're somebody who's able to be trusted and, and whose uh, you know, information is accurate and all those types of things. They want to know that you can identify with them, that you understand who they are and that you can understand what's important to them. And then you also need to build goodwill with the audience. You need to remind the audience and convince the audience that you're trying to persuade them in this area because that's what's best for them, not just because it's what's best for you, but because you have the audience's best interests at heart. So when you throw all these things together, you get your character and your competence. The audience wants to know that you are a person of high character and that you are a person of high competence. If you can, uh, you know, explain both of those things and, and have both of those things be true with an audience, then you will have attained a high level of ethos. Then with pathos, we're talking about emotional appeal, persuasion based on emotion. So uh, it could be a variety of emotions, fear, empathy, anger, guilt, joy. Those are all examples of the different types of emotions that we can draw on, that we could, that we could pull on for an audience. And, and we really want to tug at their heartstrings here when we're talking about pathos. So to do that, we use examples and stories about people. We want to put a face on this uh, topic and on, on whatever it is we're trying to persuade the audience about. We want to put a face on it. We don't just want to rely on facts and statistics. People aren't persuaded necessarily by numbers. They, they want to know that this affects real people in the real world, and maybe people that they know. We can use photos to do that. Photos bring in a, a sense of immediacy to the audience. When you see those uh, commercials and, and advertisements for the ASPCA, they don't just throw numbers out about how many dogs are abandoned every year. They show you the pictures uh, and videos of the most miserable dogs and cats, right? So that you just it just makes your heart ache for these animals and makes you want to go out and adopt one right away because photos and videos have that power. We can use those photos to really evoke emotion from an audience. And then we want to use emotive language. We want to use language that, that pulls emotion out as well and that expresses this emotion and that charges the audience up emotionally. So we want to choose our language wisely in persuasion when we're trying to engage the audience's pathos. So we want to use uh, emotional appeals. We also want to use logical appeals, which is what we mean by logos. It's persuasion based on logic. So what do we mean by logic? We're talking here about things like facts, using facts to support what, what it is we're saying, using statistics, using sound reasoning. And, and so the basics of logic are this. So in order to understand logic, we need to understand that, first of all, you have a claim when you're talking about logic. Right? You have a claim. What is it that you know? What is it that you're trying to, to convince the audience to, to accept? We have a claim. Then we have evidence. How do we know this? How do we know this to be true? So you need to present your evidence. So you add that evidence to your claim, 
and then you throw in reasoning as well and how does that evidence prove your claim how does that you see that arrow how does that evidence relate to your claim reasoning explains how that evidence supports that claim and how it all works together and then between the three of those things you get logic right so in the end we want a logical appeals as well we want to appeal to the audience's head as well as their heart we need some balance some focus on both pathos and logos as well as adding in that ethos so when you put all those together when you have the credibility the, the audience believes you're a credible person you have earned that credibility with them you have that ethos you throw in the pathos you have that emotional connection with the audience emotional appeals and you're tugging at their heartstrings and then you also uh, convince the audience with facts and statistics and you th show them you know the logic behind what it is you're saying there in the middle where all those three connect you have the most effective form of persuasion when all three of those things are present so with some additional persuasive strategies um, we want to patch holes in the in our uh, address by addressing counter arguments we want to patch holes in our speech by addressing counter arguments you can't just give a persuasive speech knowing only your side of things you need to be fully versed and fully aware of what the counter arguments are for whatever it is you're trying to persuade the audience and then you need to address those in your speech and explain why they are not as relevant or why they're not as relevant as what you are talking about and important as what you are talking about right so we need to address those counter arguments within the speech in order to patch holes in the audience's um, sense of what it is we're trying to persuade them about we also need to understand that persuasion is incremental you're probably not going to walk into a room and just have everybody do a 180 degree turn on whatever it is you're talking about uh, the, the odds are they're not going to the pendulum's not going to swing that far right so persuasion is incremental if we can move that audience just one or two steps along that that line there then then we've done our job and and our job then the next time is to persuade them a little bit further or the job of the next person is to persuade them a little bit further but our job is to move them along that line to move the line just a little bit move that needle just a little bit because persuasion is incremental it happens a little bit at a time we can also target needs as a persuasive strategy and we should target needs as a persuasive strategy you know understanding maslow's hierarchy of needs where's this going to hit people is this going to hit them at a psychological level or the level of safety or or uh, the social level well, we can target different needs and try and uh, focus in and hone in on what need is this going to fulfill for the audience and the members of the audience and we can appeal to the shared values and you see politicians do this a lot try and convince the audience i'm one of you i'm with you right so we can do the same with the audience we can appeal to our shared values and explain how what we're trying to persuade them really fits in with their life already right so this is just a very brief overview of uh, of speaking to persuade but these are some of the highlights and things we need to keep in mind when we're talking about speaking to persuade if you have questions about this or any other public speaking related topic feel free to hit me up shoot me an email i'd be happy to respond and and uh, explain a little further or or review any information that you might uh, ask me to um, just send me an email and i'm happy to answer any questions happy communicating